Hey guys, and welcome to game number 86 out of 100 of my Human vs. AI series, where I'm taking on the AI-powered Squabblebot Best Spot in a 100 game match. Game number 85 was a bloodbath, and not in the good direction, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already, or maybe don't check it out. It was, uh, yeah, definitely not a good game for me, so let's hope today is a little bit better, and I'm first this time. Kind of a tricky rack to start things off. A lot of high point tiles. I might just play picks, PYX, because it doesn't really give much back to work with. It scores 30 points. The leave is a little bit clunky, but I just don't see any longer words I can really make, especially that use the X. So I feel like this is probably fine just for lack of any other option. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. And wow, I draw another Y as well as a V, but I do at least have the S, which is certainly good. A lot of stuff I want to get rid of here. Definitely F-U-V-Y. And it's going to be pretty tough to shed all of those. So we're just going to have to see what the bot does. All right, the bot has the opposite problem, it looks like, as I do. It's got a lot of vowels. Plays O for 25. And I feel like this has to be the play. The leave is not great, but it scores 31. Doesn't really give much back. I just don't know what else I can do. Do I have anywhere to play Feist? I guess I could play Feist here. It's eight fewer points though, and it opens a bit more. I feel like I'm better off just playing Fey. The C is not great with the V, but it's not eight points worse. And I can play it with Peck, but Y-A-E is not good, so that doesn't work. Yeah, I just don't see anything else here. I think I gotta play this, and hopefully I get a decent draw. I do not. Wow. Two G's and two U's now. That was uh, that was quite something. I mean, if I have a spot for Vug, V-U-G-G, -G, I'm actually going to get completely bailed out. But as of right now, there is absolutely nowhere to play Vug or even Vugs or Gov or anything. So it's actually a really bad board right now. Like if you can't play next to the F, which Best Spot does, I guess I should probably play Vugs and Spiel. Right? I mean, it's... I think it's worth it. It's 23. Yeah, I mean, CU isn't great, but it's not horrible. And if I trade, I'm probably just keeping, like, the S or maybe the S and the C. Like, it's not a leave that's worth all that many points. It's not worth 23 or close to that. So I think I'm better off spending the S. Like, it kind of feels like a waste of an S for only 23 points, but you have to keep in mind, guys, with an S. Like, roughly the rule of thumb is 8 or 10 points better than the next play. It's not a number you need to score while using the S. It's about how much better your play using the S is than your next best play. And in this case, my next best play after using the S, like I said, is trading. There's just absolutely nothing else to do. So 23 points is a lot more than zero. I'm going to go ahead and play this. And wow, I get another... Well, actually, I already had the hue, but I get another V. So both Vs, both Ys, and a lot more scoring tiles as well to go with it. Now, the good thing about getting all these scoring tiles is I have been scoring some points despite these clunky racks. I'm actually in the lead. I was going to play Bucko and Go, but that's no longer available. So I'll probably just play it over here. Actually, probably just Buck. Because if I put the O there, that gives back a lot of counterplay down the end column with that triple letter. So probably better off holding back the O. And yeah, this seems fine. 27 points keeps VOE. I mean, I'd rather get rid of the V, obviously, but I don't really see a good way to do that. The letters and Vugs are just not conducive at all to my tiles. I mean, I'm not going to play Vug. It's too big a point sacrifice over Buck. I don't think I have anything next to Phi, really. The problem is the only tile I can put next to Gi is the B after I overlap the E with the F. And there's just nothing there. So I think Buck has to be correct. Let's do that. And all right. I pull... Is that my... Uh... Oh, no. That's not my first E of the game. I felt like my first E of the game, but I, just, uh, I guess I did have one with Fay. But yeah, this is still not a great rack, but it's at least starting to come together a little bit, it feels like. And I actually have a nice lead here. I have a 46-point lead, and the board is still pretty tight. Yeah, so many scoring tiles gone already. Both Ys, the X, the K, both Vs are probably about to be gone. Wow, TI for 9. Interesting play by the bot. A little bit ominous from my perspective. I think a great play here would be Vino and Bucko, 28 points. Gives absolutely nothing back, especially after play like TI. I'm very apprehensive about doing something like this with three S's still left after a nine point play. That certainly doesn't guarantee the bot has an S, but it makes it considerably more likely. So, not in any mood to do that. I could also play Echo. It's not terrible, 30 points, but I'm kind of tired of this V. I think I'd rather 
get rid of it and also not give the bot the floating O to work with as well. Like Vino does a great job at restricting its bingos. I mean, it can't overlock the V, no twos with a V. If it has an S, it could play with Vinos, but it's going to need to start like AS or IS, which isn't that easy to do. So yeah, this looks like a great play here. Let's do that. And all right, that's a very good draw. Not going to bingo most likely, but the Z is certainly a good scoring tile. Definitely cuz for 42 is a good option if it stays open, but we'll see what the bot does. Very, very tight board here. I'm not really inclined to open it, though, given I have a lead and good scoring tiles. I'd rather kind of force the bot to open it and then hopefully pounce with my Z and my S. There's just, like, nowhere to go right now. I mean, if it has an S, it can overlap Phoebes, like maybe an EST or IST bingo. But I'm curious to see what the bot does here. Is it going to try to open it up, or is it going to try to take it slow? We'll see. And it goes with Cat for 15. Interesting. So, Cuz is foiled... I might just play something like Zeros and Phoebes now. Or maybe, actually, you know what else I could do? I could play Zeros for 28, saving the S. That actually looks pretty good. I mean, I'm taking a nearly 80-point lead on this board. That's a very good position to be in. And it's great to keep the S, so that way if Best Spot tries to like play through the I and Vino and set up an S hook, I'll be able to respond there and hopefully maybe even bingo or at least block it. Like, if I get rid of my S, I just leave myself more vulnerable to setups. Definitely, if I were going to play here, though, I would not want to play zones because of the ozone hook. Zeros is much better. It is a lot more points. It's 44 points. So there is something to be said for that. I also leave the T partially open for bingos from the T. And bingos down from the T would be really bad for me positionally because they also would blow the board wide open. So I think, honestly, at this score, I think zero if is better. I mean, it's, it's an equity sacrifice. It's not a massive equity sacrifice, though, because it does hold the S. So probably about a six-point equity sacrifice, and it's just so much better positionally. And the S, like I said, has a lot of recursive value for when the bot eventually is going to have to open this board if it wants any chance. So yeah, I'm going to play a little defense here, and let's see how it works out. Okay, I've got a bingo here. Blank L, believe it or not. Durndles, D-I-R-N-D-L-S. And yeah, I mean, there's just like nowhere to go here. Like, where can you possibly bingo? I guess you could bingo with a 9 through the UT or the GI on the 4th or 5th row. You can maybe bingo on the L column with scat if you can start with S-O-N. You could play like sonogram or something over there, but other than that, it's kind of impossible to bingo right now. And I'm up 78 points holding an S and a blank, so I'm feeling very good. Okay, so login comes down, creating some space, not a huge opening, but the L could potentially be used. Do I have anything there? Dorndles and a blank? I don't think so. The blank would almost certainly have to be a vowel. Probably an E or an A, most likely. I'm not seeing it. So, okay. What do I want to do? I mean, I can't really... I guess I could just... Like, I don't want to start just getting into super passive defense, especially if I have a blank. Like, if I can get a bingo down, I can really lock this up. Like, I don't think I want to do something like this. They can also be re-overlapped for a lot of points. It just it doesn't seem necessary Ding, honestly, is reasonable. 14 gives back the D, which is probably about comparable to the L. So I could do that. I don't really want to play did, because that takes an O, and I don't have it. And din just makes it too easy for him to bingo. Like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to give him just make it easy for him to bingo, but I also don't want to, you know, start sacrificing huge numbers of points to play defense. I don't have any overlaps under buckos, because NI isn't valid. Yeah, I think I'm okay with Ding here. Keeps DRS blank. I think that's fine. I don't really see anything much better. So let's do that. Okay. So again, just one vowel. Several sevens here. Downers, Wonders, Wanders, Wardens, Winders, Rewinds. Is that it? I think that's it. So we'll see what's available. I don't think I have anything from the D and ding. Do I have any nines? Slide, like down slide or something. It doesn't quite work. So we'll see what the bot does. I'm up 80. If it bingos from the D, hopefully I'll be able to bingo through one of the later tiles in that word. And if it opens, it's like I'm, what I'm sort of hoping to do, guys, is that the bot is going to feel like it has to open given its deficit. And then I'll just bingo and more or less ice up this game. Like, I don't need to bingo, but the bot does. And it's always nice if you can use that to your advantage and just sort of play this cat and mouse game. Because, like, 
if your opponent doesn't open at some point, they're just going to lose. So if you can keep a really good rack and just wait for them to open and then pounce, that can be a really effective strategy, more so than trying to open yourself and be aggressive. Because then, right, whoever creates the opening, their opponent always has first dibs at it. So like if I create the opening, then the bot could have a good rack and use it. But if the bot creates the opening, then I'm the one who gets to use the opening first, or if I can't, at least try to block it. So it's always better to be the one responding to an opening, especially when you have a lead, if you can help it. But the bot thinking a little bit here on, on this turn. So we'll see what it comes up with. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably... Oh, sheesh. Wow, tut and ton for six. <laughs> Interesting. So, okay, I mean, I... I can just play, like, win. I, I mean, it definitely makes it huff, tougher for the bot to bingo, because it's harder to start with a W than a D. Now, I do give back some scoring plays, but the thing is... To go after DE, it's probably unlikely the bot kept a W with that play, right? Like, for do, or a B for Deb, or like anything. Or, I mean, a P probably not. Maybe a P, but not likely. So, it's pretty unlikely the bot is actually going to be able to use that spot. I could also just play wind and keep ERS blank and just be like, alright, I'm going to bingo next turn. And sort of feel like if the bot is close to bingoing, then we just sort of trade bingos and I'm still up 80. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that strategy either. I mean, it's hard to read Tut because, like, he's obviously close to bingoing, but how close is he? Because the board is so bad, it could be that he's not super close. So, yeah, I think either of them are fine. Either of one or wind. I think I'm going to play wind, though. Like, I'd rather just bingo myself. And because then if we trade bingos at least, then he also has to waste his good tiles. So I think let's do this. Like, all right, I'm definitely bingoing now. I, I have to imagine I have something from this D, right? Uh, indoor C, hemorrhoids. Do I have something? I mean, I have a million things with wins, obviously, but. Oversight. Do I not actually have something through the rebodies? Does nothing fit? Uh, huh. Yeah, I don't actually know if anything. Oh, dowries with a blank W. Okay, there we go. Might be the only one. Yeah, dowries weirdos. So I think I'm pretty much guaranteed to bingo next turn. Dowries, or I guess. Well, something should still play, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I can play... Okay, he had Detainer anyway through, from that D. I wonder if I have... Oh, man. I'm so close to this. Like, this almost fits, guys. If RA were good. Wow. Like, I probably have some crazy overlaps here. I mean, I don't want to play Rosaries for, like, 57. So, like, let's go through the alphabet and see... So A is nothing, B is probably nothing, C, Coteries, Esoteric, no, D is Indoor C, Oreides, Oziard. So Oziard plays here, it's pretty risky though. Oreides, yeah, this is a good rack to take some time on because there could be some crazy stuff available. Um, e is not gonna help me, F, G, H, Theories, Theorize, Isotheor, I, J, K, L? No. M, tiresome, doesn't really help. N, serotine, plays, onerous, does not. O, P, poetry's poetizer, Q, R, S, rosaries, soirees? No, it doesn't fit. T, U, V, erosive. Nope. W, X, Y, Z. Advertises doesn't fit. Wow, so yeah, not a lot of great options here, interestingly. So it's, I think, between Oziard and Roperies or Rosaries. Yeah, I, I feel like I should have something here, but there's just nothing. Almost like Aperies or... There's just nothing, though, amazingly. 
It really feels like there should be, but okay. Yeah, it's tricky, because Oziard is very risky. I mean, Ropery is, is not without risk either. It's 59. The thing is, the S in that spot, because it's already on the double letter, is a lot less risky than the O there with Oziard, with a J unseen and stuff. And this also is going to keep the board probably more open in the long run, with the bottom line open to hook a do or add. So I think I'm inclined to, at this score, actually sacrifice some points and play Roperies. I could play Seratine too for, it's actually the same score, and the E laid in the word is way more dangerous than an S in the middle of the word. So it's a bit of a point sacrifice. Um, I also just want to make sure, do I have anything like crazy? <sighs> Heroines? No. No, it's not going to work. Like, with, with these kind of racks, sometimes you have potentials for just these crazy overlaps. But I don't think it's happening. So let's play, it doesn't matter, Roperies or Rosaries, really. The P is a little more annoying to deal with. So let's play Roperies. And, all right, that's a pretty good draw, I feel like. Almost Moonshine. But I'm going to definitely try to block the bottom of the board and unlock this down as much as I can over the next couple of turns. But yeah, all things considered, I think that worked out okay for me, because the bot was going to probably bingo regardless. I guess if I had played win, I would have stopped it from bingoing, though. So maybe maybe wind was a mistake. I don't know. It was an interesting decision. Like, do I just sort of be aggressive with the blank, or do I try to, you know, force it tight? Hard to say. Yeah, I might have not played that correctly, but I'm still in a very good position. This is sort of what I figured might happen, that we would trade bingos. So... It didn't work out all that unexpectedly, really. All right, I feel like I want to try to block the S. The thing is, I have to be careful about plays like this because they look like they block the S, but they really don't since, well, either nines or even non-bingo triple triples are definitely still possible through that. And that's something the bot could fish for and it becomes kind of more annoying for me to block after I've put a tile there. So I need to be very wary of those plays. And Dobra comes down. It doesn't give me a bingo, does it? No, I don't think so. So let's see. Uh, I mean, I could just play like Homs or something, but that's not particularly good. Monish doesn't fit. Uh, let's see. Anything through this E? Yeah, I'm still a little bit apprehensive about playing Mo. But I guess it is a lot more points than Homs. It's like five more points. It's not that easy to get a non-bingo triple-triple through the OS. So it's not a crazy option. Hmm. Yeah, I think I... I, don't, I just don't see much else through this S. Like, I don't want to play Smush and burn my S, really. So I feel like Mo is fine. Yeah, 31 points. I think it's still better than Homs. He's not likely to have a non-bingo there, especially there's no ends left. It's going to be pretty tough. I mean, Homs does also block the D, so there's something to be said for that. Or Mo's or something. Yeah, probably Mo's would be a little harder to overlap. It also, yeah, it does block the D coming down. There is something to be said here, guys, for sacrificing the four points. It's not crazy. Tough call. Very tough call. I mean, the problem is if he bingos to the D, he ties the game. And I might regret giving up those four points. But he's not that likely to bingo to the D immediately. So I guess that's the thing. Like, if I play Moe's or something to this S, and then if he doesn't hit the D immediately, I can probably just block that and be in very good shape. So maybe that is reasonable. I mean, is, does Smush have any merit? I opened another line for sevens on the bottom. I don't think that's great. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to sack the points. I've changed my mind. I'm going to play over here. And let's see how that works out. Okay, so not a particularly good draw here because it's all one-pointers. And it's going to be hard to score. There aren't really any bingos. If I get a P somehow, I'd have Purloins or an N for Linurons, but not expecting to get much help for either of those. So I'm probably going to just try to like play through the D and burn through a bunch of tiles here if the bot doesn't open anything else. Something like Durian maybe. 
just like I said, I can't really score anyway, so I might as well burn through some of these low-scoring tiles, try to get some better stuff next turn. Or I could just take the outrunning route and try to score with Oli, and that's 26. So it'll depend on what the bot does. If the bot scores a lot, I might be forced to do this just to kind of keep my initiative as much as I would like to block the D. But the thing is, like, the pool, the pool is interesting because there's a lot of good stuff, obviously. There's a blank, an S, some E's, R's, T's. But there's also a Q and a J and a W, so it's a mixed pool. He's not quite that likely, I don't think, to hit the D. Okay, he plays Cot. I feel like I should play Olin here. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. It's tempting to, very tempting to block that D for sure. Because, I, I mean, I'm in good shape. If I just, like I said, if I just play, like, probably Durian or something, it's pretty tough for him to bingo. That O is not easy to hit. I'm still up 58 holding LS. And now I don't have to worry about the Q. Can try to start SLE on my next turn? I don't know. It's going to be tough for him to hit this E, and he's not going to score all that much. That D is by far the biggest bingo threat, and I'm in a very good position here. I don't know, guys. I've been playing uncharacteristically defensively for me, I feel like, this game, but I feel like I'm kind of deep in. And it just, I don't know, it doesn't feel right to play Oli and open another big line for sevens. It's going to be tough to block. I'm going to play Durian. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. All right, I get the other S, which is good. And the J is not horrible, because I'll hopefully be able to score with it. We'll see. 11 in the bag. So if he bingos now, then there would still be 4 in the bag. He has some very interesting turns this game. Like, trying to judge how defensive do I want to be. I'm not entirely confident I've been playing this correctly. But we'll, we'll see when we get to the analysis if I've missed anything. And yeah, here the bot is, I would imagine, going to have to try to make another opening. Because it's going to be very hard to hit, hit the O in Dobra. I mean, it's possible. And interesting. So just going with Awi for 29. Is it maybe just trying to outscore me? I mean, I think I'll be able to hold on if it doesn't bingo. Yeah, because now, really, other than that O in Dobra, there's just nowhere to bingo. I guess could it overlap wins? I mean, maybe, like, I mean, Tapster doesn't even fit. It's going to be tough. Maybe possible, but tough. Like, what I don't want to do is play Raj and give it an A-hook. So, I mean, I just, I don't know what I have with the J. I could just play J-O, honestly. It's not the craziest thing I've ever heard but I wonder, is he trying to set himself up for a big play with two? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, two, but what could he do there? T-I... Not much. Tim is not a word. Yeah, I don't think he actually has all that much. So, not too worried about that. I mean, I don't think Joe for nine is crazy. Like, I'm still up 40. There's not a ton of scoring threats unseen. And I have two S's. Like, I can play stuff like Sun over here and score pretty well. I think I want to get rid of this J. And it does still block some stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm too confident that I'm outscoring him without a bingo. But I, I just don't see how I lose this if he doesn't bingo. And I don't see how he's going to bingo. So, I don't know. I, I might regret this, but I feel like with two S's in hand, this is a, a good play. So, let's see. All right, I get the... P. So I have bingos here. I believe I have three, right? Slopers, Splores, and Plesser. I think those are all good. None of them are going to play, though, as far as I can tell. Well, now they will. He plays Matt. So I'll just bingo with Slopers for maximum score, and this is pretty tough to overlap. So, yeah, let's do that. I, I mean, I guess it's possibly as a crazy six-way overlap and wins, but I don't think that's going to happen. Nah, definitely not with that C. So I think I'm going to hold on here, guys. It's been a very strange game for, for this series. Extremely defensive, more so than I usually am. But it just, given how extreme the initial shape of the board was, it sort of felt warranted. The one play where I kind of diverged from that was wins. So I'm curious to see if... 
That was a good play. I don't know. It's a very, very interesting game. Like I said, not the type of game I usually play, but sometimes when you have an early lead on a dead board, it's just the most logical way to play. And I just felt, you know, I felt confident that I wasn't going to lose without a bingo. And that's always should be your gauge for whether to play defense like this. If you think you're definitely going to win if they don't bingo, then by all means play extreme defense and stop them from bingoing. If you think you might still lose even if they don't bingo and you might get outscored, then you probably don't want to play all that defense because then you could still just lose anyway. And there's nothing more frustrating than going all in on blocking their bingos and then they just keep scoring 30 and 40 and outrun you. But it didn't really seem possible here. So... Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, very uncharacteristic game for me and for this series in general. But it looks like, barring myself missing something absolutely insane here, I'm going to get this win, which is very good to stop Best Bot's momentum a little bit and uh, prevent the bot also from clinching the series. I should mention the bot is at 49 wins right now, guys. So one more win for the bot, and the bot has secured 50 wins, which... Uh, I mean, barring a miraculous comeback by me on spread would clinch the series. So, good win to get here, staying alive, and interesting. I cap for 22, saving ace in several spots. Yeah, I can play above the S and slopers or next to the M and phi. So, it's going out. I pretty much just need to figure out what my best net is. It might actually be frizz for 16. So, that's 16. It goes out with ace and as. That's 14 plus 2. Minus 8, so I end up minus 6. Uh, what else do I even really have? Not a whole lot, I don't think. 8, I guess? Is that better? 14, he plays ace and fe. Uh, 15, I guess this is minus 5. Although I wonder, he can, he could slow play, right? He probably shouldn't, though. I mean, am I stuck with anything here? Yeah, I might actually get... I might actually be stuck. Like, where am I even putting my L? I guess I have LIS vegan, but... Yeah, I think I'm actually L stuck after this, guys, if he blocks LIS. So, no, let's not go into that line. Um, let's just play Frizz. It doesn't really matter at this point, anyway. And he's gonna go out with Ace. Okay, yeah, GG. Strange game, like I said, 387 to 316. Let's take a look here and... Check out some of these plays. Yeah, weird opening rack. I think picks is fine. Just, again, not any other good options. Oh, wow. That's not at all what I figured the bot had. Interesting. It was actually a pretty constant heavy leave. This is just so many points because it gets all those overlaps with the high point tiles. Interesting. And, yeah, I think Faye is just kind of forced here. There's nothing else to really do. Jelly. Yeah, the bot was sort of just keeping it tight. Yeah, Vugs, I think, has to be worth it. Bot plays Phi, makes sense, setting up feet. Yeah, I saw Bucko, but definitely for just one more point, absolutely no good reason to open this spot. And yeah, this is about what I figured the bot had. Um, oh, I didn't consider this, but uh, absolutely no way in heck am I doing that after a two-tile fish for nine points. No way. Vino looks good, and the bot just plays catch. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, zoners, I'm definitely, I didn't even consider that, but obviously I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I mean, all of these plays, I don't think Zin, I mean, it's very aggressive. It's not crazy. Honestly, this is such a good leave. But I th I'm fine with my play here. Like, I go up 80 points and the board is dead. I'm in a really commanding position. And then, yeah, login Ding. I'm fine with Ding here. I mean, I could have also been more aggressive here with something like Rind, but Ding still keeps me in great shape. DRS blank is a great leave. And then, yeah, the next turn, wow, so no bingos here. There's five sevens, right? Nadir, Nitrate, Iterant, Entreat and Tertian, but none of them play. So the bot drops a T, and yeah, here, I don't think I want to play Winder, because the bot often has, an, it didn't, it turns out, but it often has an S after that one tile drop. So yeah, it was pretty much between Wind and Win over here, which obviously it's worse on equity, right? DRS is a lot worse than ERS with a blank, but it does block some of his bingos. I don't know. I could kind of live with either here, guys. They're both valid strategies. Just kind of going all in on defense as well as, you know, being aggressive when you have ERS blank and figuring if you trade bingos, that's just as good as neither of you bingoing. I think they're both reasonable strategies. And we did end up trading bingos. Um, let's see. Oh, there's also Ozier here. I only sell it below. I'm not sure that changes my decision too much. It's a little bit less risky here because now he needs a five to get to the triple as opposed to a four. Yeah, I maybe play it here. Also, the you know, yeah, because here the thing is, 
it also doesn't open up the bottom of the board, right? Because here, again, he can bingo with a do or add. So yeah, this is much better positionally. Okay, yeah, I didn't consider it above for some reason. I'm, I don't, I still don't think Roperies is terrible just because the S there is so much less risky than the O. But yeah, for 12 points, yeah, okay. I think this is probably a little bit better. So I, th I think a bit of a mistake there, but uh, but that's okay. Although it looks like I would have... Well, actually, no, I wouldn't have given him T-board, but... Uh, yeah, so he plays Dober. That makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, Saba did. I just blocked the bottom and bots out of space. So yeah, definitely need to open another line. Totally agree with that. Yeah, this play was really interesting too. I mean, I was about to do this and then I just kind of balked because I leave the D open to the bottom and also possibilities. I just didn't want to have to think about the bot fishing for 100 point non-bingo triple triples for the rest of the game and have to spend another turn blocking it. Like, it's going to probably cost me more than four points to block it later. So I figured... I should spend the four points now so I don't have to worry about it. Like, if that kind of makes sense. I don't know. Weird decision. I think I'm okay with what I did. Bot draws the Q. Yeah, this turn, too. Like, I mean, this is the standard play, right? Just kind of scoring and figuring I'd outrun. I just was worried that, like, I go up, what, 76. If the bot bingo's for 80 or 90 points, and now there's two triples. Also, that's the problem. Like, even if the bot doesn't bingo now and it doesn't use either... I can't block both of these on my next turn. Like, I'm by definition giving the bot multiple chances to hit a bingo on one of these triple word scores, which could easily score enough for it to get back in the game, especially if it uses some high point tiles. So, honestly, I'm fine with Durian. Like, it, it's a huge equity sacrifice. I'm aware of that, but I'm up 60 points. The bot's bingo percentage is extremely small here. Now, if I can just shut down the bottom, I mean, I'm in really good shape. And plays a Wii here. Yeah, it's... I mean, I guess there just aren't a lot of better options. And it's thinking maybe somehow it can still outscore. But it's a bit of a long shot. Um, I didn't consider Joel. I just don't really see a good reason to do that and allow the bot to play off two for 36 points, like Jam, very easily. I think, honestly, again, like, it's it's just hard to imagine this losing. Because, like I said, the big risk with these kind of this kind of mentality, this kind of strategy, is that... You lose a game without your opponent bingoing. Because really after Joe, barring some crazy overlap with Wind, which is, I mean, borderline impossible, if not maybe maybe even completely impossible. Barring that, there's nowhere for the bot to bingo right now. And I'm still up 38 points. There's not a lot of scoring on this board. Like I said, there's nothing really with two that the bot can score with. And if it opens anything on the bottom, I should be able to either bingo with it, as I did in the game, or just block. So I felt pretty confident about my ability to hold on to this lead after Joe, which is why I played it. And yeah, the bot plays Matt, which I guess, I guess it makes sense. Like I think, yeah, the bot has to do something because if it doesn't open, it's not going to win. It's an interesting idea, but I guess it's too, the thing is anything it does is not that hard for me to block. I guess with Matt, it might be tough for me to block without giving some counterplay on the bottom. Maybe that's the logic because yeah, like if I just play a four or a five, I could give back overlaps. The problem though is that, like I would have done this because the problem is if the bot's gonna be relying on an overlap, then having the C is terrible, right? Like I always talk about the C is kind of a misunderstood tile. The C is a very good tile on open boards for bingoing, but if it's a closed board and you need overlaps, it's terrible because there are no twos. So like if I just play slide or something, like the C has to be very late in the word for the bingo to fit. Because it can't be early in the word, it would have to overlap, which like I said is impossible because it doesn't make twos. And it's there just aren't a ton of words with the C late in the word. Most Cs tend to be early in words. So I just don't think, I don't know, I just don't feel like this sets the bot up well for its next turn. I feel like if it plays this, like yeah, keeping two Ts isn't great, but it's honestly not bad. There's no more Ts. It goes really well with the Rs and Ss and not too badly with the Ls. And now, like I said, if I play something, it should be a lot easier for the bot to overlap. So to me, this seems like a better execution, but like I said, I don't really know. Very tricky turn for the bot. And then of course, yeah, I just bingo here and that's GG. Uh, yeah, so that's it. This, like I said, I think I get L stuck. So I think this works out a little bit worse, but it doesn't really matter too much. Oh, maybe Lyra. Oh no, this gives back Alec. I don't want to do that. So yeah, I think Frizz is fine. And then the bot goes out. Yeah, interesting game, honestly. No, like, clear mistakes. I, I think Roperies was a mistake. I think I should have played Oziered on top. So a little bit of a shame I didn't see that. But, you know, Roperies still had some merit. Yeah, I played very defensively that game, more so than usual. But like I said, I think it was warranted. I'm, I'm okay with my decisions. But as always, curious to hear your thoughts on some of those turns. Do you think I was too paranoid? Do you think I was justifiably so? Uh, what would you have done? Always 
like hearing you guys' comments and thoughts, so please keep them coming. And, uh, and yeah, that's it for this one, guys. So good to get a win here, and hopefully we'll keep the positive momentum going. So really appreciate all your support and all your engagement as always. Thanks so much, guys, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.